Oh no, I've only gone and done it. I got my hands on it, didn't I? I had to play with it. I played with an OM1 Mark II and the 150 to 600 lens. Find out how I got on. Roll titles. <laughs> It's only going to happen. This is Brian James, a micro four thirds guy, and today I was in Wilkinson's cameras in Carlisle at the, uh, the invitation of Joe, the manager, and his staff, along with a guy called Craig. Now, Craig is the rep for OM System in the northwest of England, and he kindly brought along a whole lot of stuff for some of us to see. And I got my hands on the OM1 Mark II. The 150 to 600, very controversial 150 to 600 zoom lens, and also a little bit of information on the OM1 Mark I. So let's start with that OM1 Mark I bit first. Uh, well, first of all, it's been released a press release from OM System saying that OM1 Mark I has is in due for a firmware update, a major firmware update in the autumn or the fall, as you call it in the states, and that's great because. Although I've criticised OM System recently because of its marketing and its poor communication with the customers, I've never, I've never criticised the products. I do think the products are good. I know that I've made comment on the product, on you know size and weight and things, but I've never commented on quality being bad. And I think that this is great because we've got quality products which are being supported, like they promised us. So thumbs up to OM System. Thank you very much. And thank you for reaching out to the, to the customers to let us know timely. If we can keep those sort of changes, I think we're going to have a really good relationship, which is good. On to the OM2. No, on to the OM1 Mark II. We don't have an OM2 yet. On to the OM1 Mark II. I managed to get my hands on this camera today, and uh, initially with a little, beautiful little um, 12 to 45 millimeter f4 Pro lens from OM System. And that is just a lovely lens. It's smaller than the 12 to 40. Um, it's not as fast, obviously. It's the f4. But it's still a pro lens, and if you want a general lens for your camera, it's maybe the one to go for. It, it, I do really think it's neat and small and tidy, but fantastic quality. I tried a few different lenses on, and again, thanks very much to Craig for allowing me to do this. Um, I tried the 90mm macro. It's a lens I've been really wanting to get my hands on for a while. I tried the 90mm macro lens, and again, the results for that seems, from what I could do, were stunning, really fantastic. I took a photograph of a, a USB plug, tiny little USB-C plug, and I zoomed in on that, and you could see the machining marks on that, on the metal on that plug when you look back through the viewfinder. And I went it in to, you know, to silly amounts, 10 times, 16 times magnification, whatever it was, and it was handheld, it was sharp as you wouldn't believe, and the detail was phenomenal. Now, I might be doing a review on one of those. I'm hoping to borrow one of those in a month or two's time. So keep on watching the channel because if I can do the 90mm macro lens, I'm going to grab it with both hands and give it a go because it really is a lens which appeals to me. I also tried the 100 to 400 lens, the, uh, the equivalent of the Lumix 100 to 400 lens. Uh, again, this one's actually, I believe, a Sigma design. So, you know, Sigma is not too bad on this and it, the lens was fabulous. Again, a very nice lens to use, very nice to hold, not too big, not too silly. It was really good, so I enjoyed that one. And finally, of course, I stuck the the, uh, the rather long in the tooth now, but well worth it. And it hasn't degraded this 75mm f1.8 onto the front of the OM1 Mark II. That lens, I used to have one a few years ago. I've regretted selling it ever since. For a headshot type lens, if you really want to go in for a nice cropped headshot lens, it is fabulous. It really is fabulous. And it is pin sharp it really is pin sharp love the lens i love the feel of it slightly on the larger side for those lenses now talking about prime lenses i did have a word with craig today and um, i put a few of my points forward which hopefully were received but one of the things i really pushed him on was saying you know if you are going to be doing mark ii versions of the existing lenses let's get these 1.8 primes to have a weather sealing ring let's get them a little bit Messed, a little bit uh, nicened up with weather sealing because it's the one thing that's wrong with them. I love the 45mm f1.8, I like the 25mm 1.8, and I love the 75mm 1.8. None of them have got weather sealing. Give us some weather sealing on those if you're going to do any improvements OM system because we'll love you for it. Now, while I was on about the, um, the OM1 Mark II as well, um, it's, it, got, it does have that change. 
and that changes the name. Now I've said before, I'm a bit of a romantic about the old name, the Olympus name. I, it was on my OM1 film camera when I got it in 1979, 1980 time. And of course that's now gone where you have OM system written on the front. But it looks good. I was worried how it was going to look. It looks great on the front. It doesn't look cheapened. It doesn't bring down the camera at all. It looks right. And remember, OM system was a trade was a trademark which was used on my original OM1 you know 45 50 years ago almost because it was part of the branding for Olympus at the time so we're not bringing it down we're just bringing part of the history out again so that sort of appeals to me so well done OM system I think you've got that right and it certainly doesn't diminish the camera or the lenses in any way in my opinion and that brings us on to the Behemoth hmm the 100 to 600 now I've said I don't like the idea of using um, uh, of using equivalences for full frame, but in this occasion, when you've got a lens which has a one thousand two hundred millimeter equivalent and it's full zoom, that's an impressive figure. Now let's get the bad parts out of the way first. So I'm going to do the criticism first, and I stand by these. I know I've had the arguments with people online, but I do stand by this. This is a full frame design of a. 150 to 600 millimeter lens. It is as wide as a full frame design. We can make it smaller because we're only using a quarter of the size of that. We could make it lighter. We could make it shorter. We can make it smaller. Yes, it's a big, heavy lens. It's made by Sigma. There's the bad bits out of the way. Let's hit the last one. Made by Sigma. Sigma isn't the bad bit. Sigma produce some fabulous lenses. F Sigma are great and the fit and finish of this lens is to die for. It is beautiful. It's finished in that wonderful sort of rubberized matte black which Sigma use on their lenses which is hard wearing which looks good. It's the same as on the 30 millimeter uh, lens that I reviewed recently which I bought. The lens is beautifully made. The optics in it are wonderful. So being the Sigma is not a bad part. It's a real bonus. The, the weight and the uh, size of it, yes. Okay, it's a full frame lens. It's been effectively adapted. It's been heavily adapted actually to get the, um, the, the, the IBIS and the dual IS to work. We could push and say that we'd like a proper micro four thirds design. It would be smaller, it would be narrow, it would be lighter. However, the market for this lens is not your everyday photographer. It's your hyper sports photographer. It's your, um, it's your hyper nature photographer. These are the sort of people who are a specialist bunch. They are going to be trying to get things at the extreme. And this camera lens is allowing them to do that. If this lens was a 1200 on a full frame system, that would be what a 300 to 1200 zoom. Can you imagine how big it would be for that? It would be massive and the price would be astronomical. So, is it worth getting a Micro Four Thirds version of this made? No, because the R&D cost would be prohibitive to actually allow this to happen. I have no problem with this being a big lens. I have no problem with it being um, a heavy lens. We know what it is. My problem again was the marketing. But this is going to appeal to a certain set of people who are going to be quite happy with that size, quite happy with that weight. They're going to put it on a tripod, they're going to put it on a monopod, they're going to put it onto some sort of leaning pad, and they're going to take the photographs that they need with this lens. But it's such a small area of the market that putting a huge amount of R&D into this would be counterproductive. It would be too expensive to buy. We're already complaining about the price of this. It would be four times, ten times the price of this to make it cost effective. So no, we're not going to get that. So what do we have? I've said the, said the bad bit. What do we have? We have a lens, as I say, which has got fantastic build quality. And also the optics. I, I put it onto the OM1 Mark II. And yes, it is a biggish area, but my left arm's a bit weak. So it does sort of wobble a little bit. And I was hoping that this eight and a half stop of image stabilization plus the image stabilization for the lens, we're gonna work well together. I didn't brace myself particularly, I was sitting on the edge of a bench and I lifted the lens up and I pointed it across the shop. Now the shop is dimly lit 
the shop is just normal lighting. It's, it's not dim, but it's normal lighting. The camera is just on an automatic mode. So it could sort out the ISO. It could put the ISO up nice and high. It could um, drop the speed down. And of course, it could open the aperture to the maximum aperture. But the opening aperture is not super fast on this, remember, because of the type of lens. And I focused on a small screw right at the far end of the shop. This was quarter of an inch on a black background, quarter of an inch screw, crosshead screw. And I focused in on this and took the photo. And what did I get from it? Sharp photo. A real sharp photo from it. And when I, when I decided to um, zoom it in on this panel on the back, I was at 10 times magnification before it filled up the, the, back, of the, um, the back of the viewfinder. And when I did, you could see the detail inside the crosshead. You could see a reflection of the light inside the crosshead on the screw. That's how stable it was. That's how clean and sharp it was for a handheld from an old duffer called the heavy lens at 1200 millimeter equivalent. That said, it was fantastic to me. So I'm really impressed with that lens. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Have you had a chance to play with the OM-1 Mark II? And if so, what did you think about it? Let me know below. If you're an OM-1 Mark I owner, let me know about what you think about the firmware update and about the situation. Again, I'd love to know what your thoughts are. And if you've had a try at that 150 to 600 lens, it's not the lens for me. I won't be buying one. It's the wrong sort of photography for me. And it's one of those sort of things which I wouldn't be able to handle. I don't think I have the strength to handle it anymore. But if, you, if it's your sort of lens, let me know below. Let me know if you're interested in it. Let me know if you tried it and let me know what you think about it. Now, before I go any further, this wonderful group of people who I mention every time are the people who help keep my channel going. And they keep it going because they're my Patreon patrons. Alongside those keeping the channel going, other people who buy me a one-off coffee or a super thanks through either through my PayPal or the super thanks button below. The ones who buy me a coffee, thank you as well, because all of you combined are the people who keep this channel going, and I really appreciate it. However, till the next time, keep on taking your camera out. Keep on having fun with your photography. I'll see you. Go, 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 go and try one of these cameras. Bye-bye.